Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. And in this video, I'm going to create or I'm going to help you create a population tendencies report so we can compare tight aggressive players with loose passive players and see if we can't interpret some of these numbers to learn some lessons about how we should approach these various player types. So first off, this is the report in Poker Tracker 4 that I'm going to show you how to make right now nice and simple just to build a report but these are the steps we go through um, and I'll demonstrate each of these right now but at the end we're gonna have a report that matches this exactly now real quick we got player names hands everybody with over 500 hands in my database their currency one as according to my database on their hands right their win rate VPIP PFR call preflop two bet and then fold to see bet stats raise first in and then see bet flop turn river right here and we'll get to the exact numbers and why we're looking at these stats in a little bit when we actually interpret the results so just following the build the report right here you were on my report you're going to click new report and then all players report and let's give it a name whatever you want right here uh pop tendencies hit finish now this is automatically going to build a brand new report with only three things player name currency one and the hands you know the way i like to see it i like to see hands next to the player name and then the currency one so when you move statistics up and down here it moves them left and right uh in the report over here the next step is to add statistics now uh this is the list of statistics we want to add from left to right here to here to here so to add statistics, you're simply going to type in um, one part of the statistic and go ahead and find it. So typed in big blind, scroll down, big blind per 100 hands, and you double click it. When you double click it, it, it adds it to the far right of the report. Now, if I wanted it sooner in the report, like maybe next to the player name, of course, just arrow up, arrow down, moving it left and right right here. Next is VPIP, then PFR. So we simply type it in once again, wait for it to populate, and bam. PFR or preflop raise. There it is. Next, call preflop 2 bet. And I highly recommend that right now, as, you, as I'm building this, you open up Poker Tracker 4 and then build it along with me. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, right? It's like a do as you consume thing. If this is your first time building a report, nice and simple. I'm showing you step by step how to build it. You're going to have this one report. And then from this point forward, you can just tailor it and make changes to it to create new reports or build a brand new report every single time. So call preflop 2-bet and then fold to flop, turn, then river c-bet. So fold to, and then we're just going to have to scroll, fold to f c-bet. There's the first one. Fold to t c-bet. Fold to r c-bet. Got them all in. Next raise first in raise first in right here and then see bet of course flop turn then the river double click flop double click turn double click river bam you have all of the statistics right in as soon as this populates in a second it's not going to match entirely with that other report because we have not done any filters for players just yet the other report was filtered for these things right here hands greater than 500 because i don't want to see a player who only have one hand on that his results or his statistics his tendencies with one or 13 or 15 hands they really should not be a part of a population tendencies report because we just have not seen enough of how sugar daddy plays to to allow these numbers his actions to influence this report so we're going to filter for player types first go down to filters right here and then add new expression filter now what this does is this shows you in the report specifically the statistics and the numbers or the ranges that you are looking for. So you're going to hit new right here. Hit insert. That's going to um, insert a new or help you insert a new statistic. And we're going to scroll down. First off, as you can see, hands greater than 500. Now you could do this for hands greater than 750, hands greater than 1000 if you want. Totally up to you. But I prefer just the 500 at least for this. Hit save. Would you like to save the changes? Yes, bam, it put it up there. So let's hit insert. Oh, cancel, I apologize. Hit new first, and that clears the expression filter down here. Hit insert, and then we want VPIP 
all the way down. So first we're gonna be um, uh, filtering for tight aggressive player. So VPIP less than 22%. And then less than 22. Save, yes, save the changes, bam, there it is. Now we hit new, clears this, hit insert. Oh, actually, you know, instead of inserting, once this is clear, you can actually type it in, hashtag PFR hashtag. So the statistic name greater than 15, hit save. Yes, we'd like to save the changes. So once I hit OK, we're going to see, uh, well, I'll just hit OK so it can start populating. We're going to see player names where we have over 500 hands. Their VPIP is less than 22, and their PFR is greater than 15. And you can see all of these players meet that criteria, or yeah, the, the criteria. So now these, this is the population tendencies, or you can think of it as just their average tendencies, their average statistics based on, you know, the statistics that you selected up here. Now, I already have this information recorded on my results tab. You can see 278.22, 3.1, and so on. We'll look at these numbers in just a little bit. Let me show you how to change this report so that we can look at fishy players' numbers. You're gonna to go to Filters, Edit Expression, instead of Add a New, because we already have an expression filter, just edit. Select VPIP right here. We want VPIP greater than 30, not less than, greater than 30. Hit save and watch what happens, bam. It changes the filter up here. PFR, we want this to be, uh, let's see here, uh, what was, oh, less than 10, that's what I wanted. Right, right, yeah, PFR less than 10. Hit save and you can see that flip flop. So VPIP's greater than 30, PFR less than 10. So it's a definitely a fishy player. They've got that huge gap, which represents lots of calling, lots of limping pre-flop with those numbers. So you can see 22 players right here. And uh, on average, 42% VPIP, PFR of only seven or 6.8% right here. Very fishy type player. And once again, you can see I have the results saved, negative 545.48, negative 24.97 big blind. So now that we have these results, what you'll want to do for yourself is open up an Excel spreadsheet or something to record the numbers. Then you can start analyzing the differences between these two groups, which is, which is what we'll do right now. Alrighty, so here are all of the numbers that we just pulled up in those two reports. You can see tight aggressive numbers up here, fishy players right here. Now the variance is simply the difference between the two. So tight aggressive players in my database, their currency one was $278. Fishy players lost 545. The difference between the two, which is just another word for variance, $824 rounded up right here. So a huge difference between the two. Now, once you pull up these numbers, you could analyze just one at a time. Look at those tight aggressive players and make interpretations and uh, l create your own lessons what you should uh, take away from these numbers from this one, one player type at a time, right? You can even do these reports for l uh, loose aggressive, maniac players, nitty players, whatever you want. Um, but the basic idea is that you observe some kind of statistical difference between your, your different groups and then interpret the numbers. And then I have an additional thing where we create a lesson from our interpretation of what we observe. Um, context counts. You got to think about how they got there, right? C betting on the flop means that they were the pre-flop raiser. Folding to a C bet means they faced a C bet which means they were the pre-flop caller. So you can't just look at something like, for example, actually, let's say the first mistake right here. Tags and fish fold to flop the same percentage. Not exactly the same, but it's only a difference of 0.65, right? So they fold the same percentage, so they continue with the same percentage, so they continue with the same strength hands. Does that sound right or wrong to you? Well, you already know, I think that's a mistake right there. You can't necessarily just see the same percentage and jump to that conclusion. Tags and fish are the same when facing sea bets. Oh my gosh, so I can see bet them exactly the same, whether they're tag or lag, or I mean, tag or fish. But no, that is not the case at all. Let's dive into why that is. So and the actual observation that we're noticing here is tags and fish fold to sea bets the same practically the same, right? 0.65% difference, not much at all. The interpretation, so ask yourself, why is this? Why are they folding the exact same? Tight aggressive players are tight. Loose aggressive, I'm sorry, loose passive players are fishy. Shouldn't they be continuing way more often? Well, they fold at the same frequency. 
but tight aggressive players call preflop with tighter ranges. So that's why this column is right here. These tight aggressive players, they only call 8.86 of the time, 8.8, .8, let's just round up, 9% of the time. Very small calling range. Fishy players, 37% of the time they're calling, right? So when they face that C-bet, right? Fold to flop C-bet means they had to face a C-bet. Tight aggressive players has have much stronger ranges in general just when they face that C-bet. Loose passive fish, wider ranges, 100%. So, tags call preflop with tighter ranges. Therefore, when they're continuing the same percentage of the time, folding the same means they continue at the same percentage as well, they have stronger ranges post-flop when they decide to continue. What's the lesson we can take away from this? Tags are more willing to fold stronger hands and draws, so bluff them. They're folding at basically the same frequency, but they start with stronger hands. That means they are willing to fold the second pairs, maybe the top pair weak kicker versus a big bet, second pairs, third pairs, under pairs, gut shots they're willing to fold. But those fishy players, they don't fold gut shots, right? They don't fold any kind of draw. They stay in with bottom pair, six, seven on the ace, queen, seven board. They're gonna stay in with that in hopes of hitting another seven or a six on the turn, right? So tags are more willing to fold stronger hands and draw, so bluff them. But value bet the heck out of fish who call with very weak hands and draws. And we could just interpret that and learn that lesson basically by just looking at pre-flop tendencies that got them into the post-flop spot where they face the C-bet. So another observation, fish fold more on rivers than tight aggressive players do. It's only a difference of 6.5% rounded, but still they are folding a little bit more often, right? What is our interpretation? Why are they folding a little bit more often on rivers? Here's how I interpret the numbers. Well, fish chase draws and weak pairs hoping to improve. That fish that called on the ace queen seven board with six seven, they wanted to hit a six or a seven on the turn on the river. They didn't hit either one. So now they're folding more often because they finally realized, oh, this isn't a hand worth sticking around with, right? They chase those draws in weak pairs. But, or not but, but what's the lesson we could take away from this? We should occasionally, not 100% of the time, but we should bluff fish on wet boards when that draw doesn't complete. When we think our opponent could have a ton of flush draws and straight draws given the flop and the turn, but everything bricks on the river, might be a good spot. If we don't have a pair for ourselves, yeah, let's go ahead and bluff with our king high, our queen high, our nine high hand, whatever it might be at the time. Another observation looking at the post-flop section over here, you might notice that tags and fish, they see bet the same on the flop. Not 100% the same, but pretty close. Only a 1% difference right here, right? So what is my interpretation of this? Well, tags bluff more often. They're see betting slightly more often, but because they have that wider range over here, pre-flop open raising range, they're actually, they have a, a higher percentage of bluffs in their C betting range, even though their frequency is basically the same. They have more bluffs in their range. Fish, they C bet more for value. And once again, they're only raising first in 9% of the time. So when they're C betting, they have a greater proportion of value hands in their C bet range as opposed to bluffs. And bluffs could be draws, you know. So what's the lesson we can take away here? Well, you want to attempt bluff raising versus tight aggressive C bets because they have more bluffs in their range because they have wider ranges and yet C betting at that same frequency. Try bluff raising, whether it's check raising or raising in position. Generally, fish who love calling don't C bet bluff that often, right? Like these players just love calling in general, so they're not going to be bluffing that often. They would rather play passively and just check or check call with their draw. So be cautious when continuing with weak hands and draws versus a fish's c-bet. Because like I said, a greater proportion of value c-bets in their range. Now another observation looking at the post-flop section over here. Tags are more honest on the turn. Totally. It goes from 61 to 49%, a 12% drop. <gasps> holy cow, these players, it doesn't drop at all. They see bet almost the exact same amount on the turn. But look how interesting. I'm not 
discussing this down here but they're pretty honest much more honest on rivers right we see the same and then a big drop a big drop and then an increase on the river this is the spot where turn players are honest when sea betting so the interpretation well they bluff more on flops so they have more value in their range on the turn because they're sea betting much less often they're probably most of the time double barreling with like top pair top kicker or better or maybe their best flush draws and open in and straight draws what's the lesson we can take away here well call flop c bets and bet as soon as they check on the turn <clears throat> now once again because these are population tendencies we're thinking about you're not going to do this every single time you might come across a tight aggressive player who you know loves to see bet the flop they love to see bet again on the turn maybe on the turn it's another 60 percent whatever it might be in a, a particular player yes if they double barrel a lot maybe don't go into it with that plan but against your average tight aggressive player maybe you don't have a ton of hands on them but you know they're tight aggressive these are the general tendencies for tight aggressive players so this play can generally work unless you know something more about your tight aggressive opponent now the last observation over here very important tags are winners loose passive fish are losers look at this a huge difference in uh these player bases right here 823 dollar profit swing between the negative 545 and the positive 278 look at their win rate right here negative 25 for the fish positive three that's a 28 uh point swing right there crazy right so the interpretation raising is better than calling tighter ranges are better than wider ranges right like if we look at this we are not we tight aggressive players are raising so much more than their uh, loose passive opponents loose passive players are calling so much more than their tighter opponents as well right so when you have tighter ranges versus wider ranges you have more pre-flop equity what's the lesson here that we can take away tight and aggressive is a formula for poker success so i should call less often and raise more that's absolutely true so this is a really good and obvious indicator that tight is right especially at micro stakes cash games all right thank you so much for watching this video i appreciate your time i hope that you took the time while we were building that report to build your own in poker tracker 4. whatever those numbers that you come up with depending on your sites and the stakes that you play uh, you might actually come up with far different observations and different interpretations uh, than I do because I only play at two different sites. You might be on three or four different sites, things that I do not play on. So take the time to do this analysis for yourself in your database so you can start making more, um, uh, 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 better exploits against general player types like tag and fish in this instance. All right, thanks again. Please subscribe to the channel, ding that bell for notifications, and I'll catch you in the next one.